Well, good morning, folks, and it's great to have, have you all here this morning. The place is, uh, the sanctuary is filled up, and it's good to see you here, and you notice it's nice and warm in God's house this morning. Special thanks to Shelley this morning for the, for the worship that she organized and those beautiful songs of, of uh, glory that we sang to, to our God and King. Uh, really nice, and she did such a good job of the, uh, of the uh, uh, children's story. I think she could give us a story too one day, eh? <laughs> and remember, one of those cakes has got my name on it, so... All right, I'd just like to open our sermon this morning with uh, just a, a reading from the book of um, Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, and just reading from verse 1. And it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I'll read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And that ties in nicely with the, with the subject that I've chosen this morning and its regards to commitment. Well, we are now at the end of another church year. We have our church year from uh, July to June, and uh, we've just been all through the process of uh, nomination and electing new officers, and we've passed it for the church, and uh, it was a busy and a an historic year from the 2009-2010 period. Historic because of the eight people that gave their lives to Jesus Christ in baptism, and we can really praise the Lord for that. There were also two folks that came into fellowship through profession of faith, and we praise the Lord for that. There were also those members who brought their children to be dedicated to their Lord and Saviour and we can praise the Lord for that. An historic one also because Wangare is enjoying their first South African pastor and his family. So again, history has been made there. Historic because of the Bible studies that are currently being conducted, six in Wangare and nine throughout the district, and it's growing. So we can praise the Lord that these souls who are interested in finding out more about his truth Historic because of our ADRA free clothing program, and it's amazing, and we can praise the Lord for the, the number of people that visit our free clothing program, between 200 to 300 each month. So please don't forget to donate clothing. Historic because of the incre increased sorry, weekly attendance in Sabbath school and church, our divine service, and we can praise the Lord for the spirits leading in that area. And we can say it's historic because of what's both happened to the church building, to the maintenance program, and also spiritually for its growth. And when we reflect on that, we can't change it anymore because it's past, but we can improve on it. Historic, not for our glory or praise, because we've done nothing. We've just been instruments of the Holy Spirit working to help bring this work to an end. So special thanks goes to all who have served the body, the church, and for those who have now laid down or aside their church office and duty, we thank you and will be always indebted to your services. And again, from the end of next week, we again set sail anew with a new team of officers, and may we all be fully committed, committed to the duties of office that we have committed ourselves to. Remembering that we are all in service together, and all in service for one purpose preparing our community for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're called Seventh-day Adventists. Right, well, as we reflect upon this year, I have a little uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'll get it just around the right way. Oops, the, can we back up on that, mate? Yeah. We had our eight people decide to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Eight new souls becoming members of our family, new brothers and sisters, what a joyous occasion that always is. And when we reflect upon these people giving their lives to Jesus Christ, how have you encouraged them in their new walk with their Lord and Saviour? How have you welcomed them into the church over the last five months? 
We all know these people, and you can see they've all got smiles on their faces because they're happy because of the decision that they made, because of the family that they now belong to. I have a little privilege in, in the leadership role of this church because I know how these members are feeling. They are very happy, as you can see, the smiles on their faces. And as I thought upon the different new members of, this, uh, of our church, these out of these eight people that have been baptised, one in particular comes to mind, and that's Brian. It hasn't been an easy walk for Brian over the last five years, and even though there's lots of things happened since Pastor Ross conducted his seminar here in Wangarei, uh, Brian's so excitement has never waned. He has always been uh, excited, and, it's, uh, and it just didn't faze him the fact that he had to wait that long. He realised that he had encountered the truth of the gospel and that he has had his eyes fixed firmly on the cross of Christ, fixed firmly upon his Lord up until this very day. He is in constant study and confirming the newfound truths of God's word. And for this, we can really praise God that this man has really um, put himself into finding out or con confirming the truth that he's found. And one of the pure, and, pure excitements and utterances of joy that we constantly hear from Brian is the word, wow. Right? You, we hear that quite constantly. Hang on, can you move that on, Bill, please? Is this word here, wow. And as I was thinking about this word, wow, I think, well, maybe there is also a message in here for us. So that when we look at this word, wow, I thought, yeah, what could we get out of that? And Brian uses it in such a, an ecstatic and an and a expression of joy. Wow. Exactly. There he is. All right. So we could uh, we'll move that on. And I thought if we use the first word, W, and we add the letters A-L-K to it, it could mean A-L-K, all Lieber Kinder in German, which simply means all loving children, and that's what we are, aren't we? We're all loving children of God, okay? So we'll take up and we'll have our first letter as walk. And when I think on this word walk, um, from the day we accept this eternal gift, we then be begin a totally new walk with Christ. The old walk in the world then ceases and we walk in newness of life. We are still in the world, but not of the world. Walking in the footsteps of our Lord and Master, that is a joy and a privilege. To walk the Christian walk is only possible if we have a knowledge of whom is leading, and this takes time and study and prayer. Then we have the O. Oh, I'm sorry, there it is. There we have the O, and I thought, well, what could we add onto this as an acronym? And I've uh, been thinking about it, and I thought, well, we could put on the end of this one the letter N for, yeah, for now is the day of our salvation. Now is that moment of time when you make the decision to follow Christ. Whether you have been baptized 60 years or 20 years or six months, now is the moment to make a new decision to follow Christ. So when we add the letter N to the letter O, we have the word ON. So the acronyms for the letters W and O are WALK and ON. And if we also contemplate on this work ON, this word ON, we have here in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When my Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be my witnesses. And notice here with the word witnesses, it is not singular, but plural. Witnesses to the ends of the earth. That's great, because that just not, doesn't mean it's just me. It means it's all of you are included in this. And included in that is our eight new members of our family. 
That's all of us. And it also says, and to the ends of the world, or the earth, I should say, you will be my witnesses. And even down at this end of the earth, we are to be his witnesses. It might sometimes be down under, down the bottom of the earth, but here we can be his witnesses. And also it says, but you will receive power. Power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Jamie uh, Schrock, when he was here last, gave a wonderful sermon on the subject of being God's witnesses. Wonderful. I had a lot of positive comments come through from that, but how easily we forget. Power, we have received power from the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses. On. Walk on. We can use the last letter W for water so that we are actually to walk on water. And when I think of the word uh, water by itself, through water we have physical nourishment, we have the living water from Jesus. When he said to the woman at the well, that he says, I have water that I can give you, and it's living water. It is also into the watery grave that we buried and laid down our old selves to walk in newness of life. Wow. Walk on water. Naturally, too, when we think of it from the physical, uh, phys physicality uh, point, um, we need a lot of working of quantum physics in order for us to walk on water. But with the Lord, all things are possible. Are you having a walk on water experience this morning? Have you had a walk on water experience this week? By faith is the only way that we can walk on water. And I'd like us to turn to the story in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, reading from verses 25 to 33. And it says here, when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when they was evening was come, he was there alone. I'd like just to stop there just to, to point out too from that text, you know. When Jesus had sent the whole multitude away, he went up into to the mountain to be close to his father so that he could spend the night alone in prayer. And when, uh, verse 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So the waves had come up. It had pushed the, pushed the boat even further out onto the lake. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Even just reading that today brings me great joy to know that Jesus says to, says to us every day, it is I, be not afraid, as we go about our work witnessing for him. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, notice, he answers him with, ask him with a question, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee, onto the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Be of good cheer, be not afraid, for I am with you. What a comfort and joy that salutation even brings again to me today. You know, when we think of the verse 28 here also, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And with one word, the Lord says, come, come. Amongst the wind and waves, Peter clearly heard the word come. How is it with us? You know, are we still hearing the word of our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ to come in amongst our busyness of everyday life? And that is as the Saviour's, Saviour's invitation to us anew every day. Come, come as you are and learn from me. And Peter, with all his excitement and desire to be with his Lord, stepped down out of the boat by faith in his Lord, he stepped out of the boat. Folks, 
we are also to step out of the boat and walk on the water and have a wow experience with our Lord. Unfortunately, though, for a lot of us, our boat has become too comfortable. The saying might also be heard, don't rock the boat. I'm cruising just nicely, thank you. If your boat isn't rocking, then Jesus isn't your captain. It's because you have stepped out of the boat that things are happening in your lives. Satan will make, will make the waves foam and the winds blow. It's because Peter has his eyes fixed firmly on his Lord that by faith he was able to walk on the water. Are you walking on the water daily? Is your faith allowing you to walk on water or are you sinking? You know, as soon as Peter took his eyes off Jesus and they looked, looked around, he too began to sink. The same distraction that the devil creates around us is so that we do not focus on what we have committed to. To serve and to witness for our saviour and to serve our neighbours, brothers and sisters. To be recreated in his image through the ever-changing power of the Holy Spirit. We are to spend time, spend time on our knees, spend time in his word, because now the sea is relatively calm out there, but as we get closer to the second coming of Jesus, those waves are going to get bigger. Today is the day of our salvation. To be recreated in his image, as we saw also in our Sabbath school, through the ever-changing power of his Holy Spirit. The distractions are brought to us in many successful ways, unfortunately. Whether it's with the media, whether it be computer, internet, or television, this is a very successful temptation of Satan. And remember, it doesn't matter where we have our computer, it depends on what we watch, because God knows what we're doing every moment of the day. Maybe people we associate with also bring us away from our commitment to the Lord. They may influence in the way that we keep our Sabbath, by invitation to parties, sports events, and so the list goes on. The distractions are so subtle that before we know it, we are already down the path of letting biblical standards be replaced by the standards of others, if you can at all call them standards. To look upon and behold the beauty of Christ, to behold the beauty of our Lord and what he has pre pre prepared for us, Brothers and sisters, this is mega important. To only place our eyes upon Jesus. That's the only place. In his word, constantly getting to know him better each day. It is so worth it. It may not seem necessary, but believe me, it is. In verse um, 30 of our voice, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And, when his out, and with his outstretched hand, he called him up and said, Thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? These or those same loving arms he wraps around us when the waves get rough and the wind blows. Jesus outstretched both of his hands on the cross of Calvary, and gave us all the opportunity to be saved. All it takes is, yes, Lord, I come. Doesn't matter in what particular situation we are today. When we call to him, Lord, save me, he is willing to save us. And it doesn't matter what we look like, who we are, he will save us. Again, by having our focus firmly fixed on our Lord, our faith is strengthened so that we have no reason to doubt in any form. Experience the joy of seeing the Lord work in your life on behalf of others. Then you will love walking on water. Have you really stepped out of the boat this week? Have you taken hold of his hand? To work or to walk with your Lord, to serve and witness for your Lord and God. You all at some stage committed, gave your life to him. You gave yourselves to God. 
how is it really with you? Are you still committed? Our new brothers and sisters, in your commitment, is it just as strong as it was, was sorry, on the 13th of February 2010? And is it getting stronger? Is your commitment being renewed every day anew? Walking on water. Let's take the prophetic application of the word water. In the case of uh, water and prophecy, it refers to the masses of people. And if we apply it to us walking on the water today, if we are to walk on water, then we are to work in amongst the masses of people, presenting to them the only hope, the only hope of salvation that we have as a church. Ever before, upholding them the commandments of God. And what a joy that is. Keeping holy the Lord's day, his Sabbath. Loving your neighbor and God our king. Not coveting or, for, or fornicating. Those are the sins that bring us away from our commitment to our Lord. And you know, it's a joy to be able to talk to others about this wonderful hope we have. We had uh, um, Carmen's neighbor come and visit with us just recently a man of Austrian descent, but a man who is confused with the teachings of the churches. Satan has everyone confused out there. And when he heard, uh, we showed him a DVD on uh, final events, and he was so happy to see that because it brought everything back into perspective. You know, And we're not to be ashamed of what we believe or what we present. We've had the witness this morning of how Ron is enjoying 3ABN and that's only just one person here in Wangarei. There are people all around the world enjoying 3ABN and hearing the last cry. As in the statement of the three angels' message in Revelation 14, verse 7, it says, we are to give the message with a loud voice to fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him. Worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountain, of water. That's a privilege to pass that message on. If you have committed to the Creator whose judgment is taking place, not in the future, but now, then it says that we are to worship Him. Worship Him. And what a wonderful song that we sang this morning in worship. We are to give glory to Him, not just here on Sabbath, but every day of the week, in our workplaces and amongst our friends, if we are in sport, on the sports field, give glory to him, worship him. What a privilege to worship, to worship the creator, judge, and savior of this world. I'd like us also just to, to reflect on the book, of, uh, the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, and we all know uh, as, uh, these verses here. But I'd just like to point out that um, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, it reads, But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dreams and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. That is the same God that we serve today. 605 BC, that dream was given to Nebuchadnezzar, and over 2,000 years later, um, that God is still looking after us, still leading this church and preparing it to take it home to the promised land. In uh, Daniel chapter 2 also, in verse 44, and it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. We are a church, a movement of prophecy, and that is the message that we've got to give to the world. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, and he said there will be a kingdom set up soon that no man can destroy. I'd just like to ask Bill to put that song on for us, on the DVD, uh, on that mission DVD, mate. There's a little song uh, called We'll Stand. I might like to give him a hand in there and while he prepares that. So as the, uh, as the call was given to, uh, to Nebuchadnezzar, so the call is given to us today to help prepare the soon coming kingdom of our Lord and Saviour and to be able to stand, as we'll hear in this song, 
to stand tall for what we believe so that you can all have a well experience also. Let's all together, as we move forward as new officers for this church, let us all walk on water in faith, believing that the Holy Spirit is the one that's driving us. I'll just wait for a few moments while uh, they get this ready. Our main technician's away today, this afternoon.